Hello everyone, my name is Mitch Tabian and this is part 3 of um, my tutorial on how to control a robot arm with an Xbox 360 controller. So, if you come this far, um, we basically just got to go through the Arduino code and I'm going to show you this really, really bad circuit diagram that I made. I think it gets the job done though. Okay, so we'll start with the, the uh, circuit diagram. Here's your Arduino Uno, obviously. These are the servos 1 through 5, and this is your USB to serial port that plugs into your PC from your Arduino. So, each servo gets connected to the output pins on the Arduino. Make sure you connect them exactly like this, because in the Arduino code it references these pins. Uh, then we just look for the 5 volt pin on the Arduino Uno. You should, you should have one if your Arduino Uno is new. I think even the older ones should still have it, so yeah, just find the 5 volt pin. All the servos can be powered by 5 volts, so it's really convenient. Just plug it in, you don't even have to plug in the power in, in the Uno, you just uh, making power through the USB. Um, so take the 5 volts, I put it into a breadboard, and then connect all the servos to, to that pin to power them all. Uh, and then they all just have to share a common ground, so find one of the ground pins on the Arduino Uno, plug it into a breadboard, and then just shove them all in there. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy to, pretty easy to wire up. So next we'll go through the Arduino code. So after you've installed the Arduino, the first thing you need to do is check to make sure you have this library installed. So go up here, go to include library, manage libraries. Type servo. Pretty sure it's this one. Um, yeah, it should be this one. So just make sure that this is installed. It'll say installed up here. Um, hit install. You'll see a little progress bar go down there, and then hit close. Then when you type include servo.h, it should highlight. <coughs> so we start up by declaring servos. Uh, there's five servo motors in my robot arm, so obviously there's five of them. Uh, these initial positions of the servos are declared because it's used for a reset button later on in the code that I'll show you. Uh, so how it works is basically every time you hit, hit like say you hit the left joystick, Q, the Arduino code will will uh, list, it's, it's listening for that, and when that happens, it, um, it's going to increment the position. So that's what we use this this position here for. Oh, this increment, sorry. This time delay, I was going to originally use this to control the speed, but I decided to just control the increment size to vary the speed instead. So this doesn't really matter too much. It's got to be here, but it just, just doesn't really matter. Uh, so this is where we set the initial positions of the servos. Obviously positions 1 through 5. Uh, I don't want to touch these initial these initial ones yet because they're used for a specific purpose down down to the bottom of the code where we have a reset button. <clears throat> so what we're going to be incrementing is positions one through five. This is this is the power button that I was going to put in. Um, so you don't even actually need this. You can just leave it out if you want. So yeah, that's that's optional. Uh, you need to have serial begin at a 9600 baud rate because that's the baud rate you're going to use with putty. So make sure that's the same. This is where we attach the servos to the pins. So if you look at the circuit diagram, servo 1 is pin 12. Uh, so servo 1 is pin 12, and these will all match up with the circuit diagram. So it makes it easy for you. Uh, so then this is where we define the initial positions. So the write command sends, the, sends data to the specific servo motor. So servo one write we'll send position 1, which we've declared as we've declared as 90 degrees. So this will, will, will set servo 1 to an initial, initial position of 90 degrees. I have them all set to 90 degrees except for servo 2, which is the, the claw. Um, 0 is wide open. Oh, excuse me. Alright, so now we can get into the loop. Uh, I think I'm not sure if this is needed. I haven't tried it without it. I read somewhere that you need to flush the serial data before you start, so I put it in there. Um, 
You could try it without, but I know it works with it, so can't hurt to have it there. This is the value that the Arduino code is going to be looking for. So serial.read means it's looking for incoming serial data. So we define that as value, and this is the this is the variable that we use in all the loops. This integer is what I use to break loops. So we'll so we'll go through um, servo 5's move method, and all the other servos are basically the same. So I won't bother going through all of them. I'm just going to go through this one because they're they're literally the exact same thing except for the, the key changes. So if the W key is hit, which is right on the joystick, um, value is going to be W basically. Um, once that happens, continue looking for the next value. Uh, then, oh, these I put limitations on it so that my servo can't go more than 180 degrees because my cords aren't long enough, it might pull it out. So these aren't technically needed, but you you probably will be safer to put some limitations in so you don't like break something. So the next part is position, if, if W is hit, it's going to increment position 5 plus whatever the increment is. I think I started at 1. So if we go up, yeah, the increment starts at 1. So it's going to increment position 5 1 degree, and then it's going to write that new position to the servo motor. So this is, it increments the position, writes the new position, so it's the equivalent of the servo motor moving 1 degree. Um, then this, this is used to break the loop. So if you let the W key go, basically, if value does not equal W, that'll set I equal to zero and the loop will break because I must be one for this loop to continue. This is the um, speed variation that I said I was going to use but um, I found out that changing the increment actually works better so you need you need this but it's not really that important. The next one is the Q. So this is going to move this this is going to move position 5 in the opposite direction. It just the increment, everything's the same except the increment is subtracted. So then you, you write it, write the new position. If it's not Q, it breaks, and same thing. Uh, the only difference is this limitation. So position 5 must be greater than or equal to 30 degrees. I found that just the yeah, same reason as the, as the 180 up here, in case the cord pulled up. So the next one, all, actually all the next ones are exactly the same. So like servo 3, same thing, but you use A and S. Servo 4 is the same thing, but X and T. And servo 1, R and E. Oh, servo 2, Y and D. So where, where the code gets different is when you come down here to the change speed method. So this, this method is going to basically change the increment. You can change the increment to 5 and a low of 0 so if if it's 0 obviously the arm isn't going to move and if it's 5 it moves really fast so you gotta be careful so by hitting the N key right here um, if increment is between 5 and 1 the increment will decrease then it sets I to 0 and the loop breaks so it will only do this once. You click N and it will do it once, basically. Uh, then this is needed if if the increment is 5 and you hit N, it's going to go down to 4. If it's M, so this key right here, and the increment is between 5 and 1, then increase the increment. And same thing, break the loop. So this this is the reset method. So if you ever get your silver, your um, your arm stuck in a weird position and it's not it's not operating properly, you can just hit Z and it will reset to the neutral position. This is where I use those um, the initial position with constant integers. <clears throat> so we start with servo five. If servo five is less than the initial position, uh, we will increment the position one until until um, 
until it's greater than or equal to the initial position. When that happens, the loop will break. That's what this uh, I5 is here for. Oh, I actually forgot to... Oh, whoops. I forgot to put this up here. I5 equals... Whoops. Venture I5 equals 1. Hmm, okay. So then uh, the loop will break. Oh, yeah, we forgot that. Um, so the same thing for the other direction. So if position 5 is greater than instead of less than, it will, position 5 will de-increment until position 5 is less than or equal to initial position. And so, so yeah, it just, it, it will take the position and increment it and move the robot arm slowly until the initial position is reached. And then it's the same thing for resetting servo 3, same thing for resetting servo 4, and um, servo 1 and 2 are different because that's just the wrist and the claw. So I didn't, I didn't do it iteratively like I did here. I did that because if you just jump to the initial position, it could, it could potentially break something depending on the speed. So, th but these, these don't really matter because they're just small little servos, the wrist and the claw. So it's just if the position was one does not equal the initial position, position one equals initial position, and just move it right there, just jump to it basically. And that's the end of the reset method. This this part you can ignore. That was for the optional power on and off button. And that's pretty much it. So when you're ready to upload it to your com, you just go up here, go to board, select your board, go to the com. I'm com four. Uh, to find out your com, you can just go down to device manager, go here, ports com, Arduino Uno, you can see it's in com4. Uh, so select, just click on that, and this, that's what mine said, I have no idea what that means, but that's what mine is. And once you're done, hit upload. And when it says done uploading, you are good to go. So once that's done, you can just load up your key sticks. So you got that. Open up your putty. Select your COM. Mine was COM6. It's not plugged in right now. Baud rate 9600. Hit load. And then hit open. And you'll be good to go. Your robot arm should operate perfectly. Uh, so if you have, if you have any problems, uh, leave a comment. I'll try and answer it. But everything's pretty straightforward, I think, and it's not a lot of parts, so should should be good. Uh, thanks for watching.